figure out things and learn how to prove ROI along the way. If you guys need help with anything, there's my info. All you have to do is email me. I will do my best to get back to you unless I'm traveling to England, in which case I won't respond for a couple days. Um, but for the most part, I will respond fairly quickly. My husband also made me this handy QR code. So if you need assistance, you can simply scan the QR code and fill out your contact us form and somebody will get in touch with you and help you. All right, so did you guys know that there are apps and teams? Some people do not know this. Did you know that there's more to teams than chat and meetings? Telephony. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to walk you through some slides just to give you the gist of things also because I want you to have a reference point to go back to later so you can download slides when you're like, okay, Sharon, I remember you showing me this in the demo, but I have no idea where it was. So the slides are there for a reference point, but I'm going to walk through them to kind of pre-game you a little bit for the demo. So when we get to the demo, you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. So we're going to go through basics on the slides, and then I'll go into the demo and answer more questions. It'll get a little bit more interesting. So <clears throat> you guys know where this is. How many of you guys do admin stuff? Admin, back end, yes. OK, so now there's like 87,000 different admin centers, yes, so you go to an admin center and it's like, I don't even know what button to push anymore. And by the way, if you keep clicking buttons, like things just show up. I do demos, I do training, I'm clicking along and I'm like, oh, I've never seen that one before. Hang on, I'm gonna take a note. <laughs> Didn't even know it was there, but okay. Um, and I know what's coming before it's coming and sometimes there's like, oh, hey look, there's a new button, that's cool. Or wait, where'd my button go? You guys experience this on a regular basis, right? Wait, the button is not there anymore. <laughs> okay. Um, so anyways, um, so in the admin center, we have this lovely area where we can now manage apps. It kind of showed up a while ago. Um, and a lot of people don't really get in there because they don't think about that. But from an admin perspective, um, I, when I wrote this session, I was like, well, we've got Teams apps, but now what? Somebody's got to control them. Somebody's got to manage them. And then, of course, your security team's like, well, how do we control this? How do we write a policy? How do we keep people from clicking on them? Wait, what do you mean they can download any app they want out of the app store? Wait, what? No, no, no. We have to stop all that. Right? So made this really nice um, area in the admin center where you can manage that. It's okay. It's getting there. <laughs> Give it time. Um, at a high level, you can. Um, so here's the official answer to what this does. Um, it says you can control which apps are available to your organization by allowing and blocking apps. True. You can upload and approve custom apps. Also true. After managing the apps on this page, you can use the app permissions and app setup policies to configure the apps that are available to specific users in your organization's app store. Also true. But. <laughs> It's going to take you a little while to get there, and there's a little more work. This kind of implies, oh, you just go in and click a couple of buttons, and you're good to go. No. Um, you do have to do some work. So um, in these slides, I've put the links back to the actual docs area where you can go in and actually read about how to do it um, when you get in here and you get confused, as you probably will. So once you're in that Teams app area, up at the top right, and I'll show you in the demo, there's this really kind of little link that you can barely see. It's very intuitive. You would absolutely know to find it. Um, and it says org-wide app settings. And I'm putting it in the slide this, this way because I want you to remember it's up on the top right. Okay, so when you go to that Teams app management page, on the top right, it says org-wide app settings. It's a little teeny tiny link. <laughs> it's not on the left on the panel <laughs> with the things to do. It's up on the right with a little underline. Um, when you do that, guess what? There's your org-wide app settings that you were probably looking for. And as you can see, you have a ton of options. Um, <laughs> you can do all of these things right now, org-wide, <laughs> for Teams apps. Not very many yet. Um, so you can do these. And so I've kind of spelled these out with some really basic information to get you started. So the first thing is called a tailored app. Um, I don't know if you guys know what tailored apps are, um, but essentially what you can do is if you don't want your users having a full-blown Microsoft license, because that costs money, you can actually give them what's called an F license. 
And an F license is designed for somebody who is a frontline worker. F stands for frontline worker. And a frontline worker is somebody who literally only needs to use Teams apps, okay, in general. Now, if that app includes Word or Excel or anything like that, they're going to still need the additional M365. But if all they need to do, for example, is you're using something like shifts. So I, I like to talk about shifts. Um, if you are using something like shifts and that's all they're using, there is no need for you to buy an entire E5 license for them to use shifts. You can simply give them an F license and limit the policy to only show shifts. And then on their mobile device, they will have teams with shifts and you will not be paying a lot of money for it. So this is what we call the tailored apps. And what that means is they are going into Teams to use a very specific or specific apps, app or apps, um, and that's all they're going to do. So it's kind of an interesting thing to know. When you get an app license and you turn on this tailored apps option, it will show these out of the box as of today. So all my reference slides, always check the dates because when I update them, I update them at the day of that I speak. Because it will, it probably has been different and it will change again. But as of today, if you click this on for tailored apps, it will show these particular items. And these are the items that Microsoft kind of sees as the tailored apps that people will only use as a frontline worker. Things like walkie talkie, shifts, tasks, approvals, they're just gonna click a button. That's all they're gonna do. Maybe enter their time, maybe talk to somebody, right? So it's a very limited experience in Teams that gives you more for your money for people who use frontline workers, especially for people who use mobile for their Teams app, right? Which by the way, it's coming guys. It's pretty cool, all right? Um, the other option you have is controlling your third-party apps. So third-party apps are apps that are outside of your organization. This includes Microsoft, so keep that in mind. <laughs> um, so you can control which third-party apps can be installed for your organization. Um, basically, you can turn it on or off, but just remember, if it's off, that means all. No third-party apps can be installed by the user. It's fine if you have a desktop support team that wants to pop in and install all their apps for them. But if you do this and you want them to use the Microsoft apps, make sure that the Microsoft apps are in your policy installed. Otherwise, your users are going to go, that's super cool. And you're like, I want you to use shifts. And they're like, so cool, no problem. I'll go in and set it up. And they go click the button and it says, we're sorry, your administrator has blocked you from installing third-party apps. So make sure if you want them to use an app from anybody that it's already set up. Um, this allow new apps option will basically allow um, any of the new apps that are published into the store for people to be able to see them, all right? Now, in all good Microsoft fashion, there's a but. Based on their Teams apps permission policy. So at an admin, we wanna pay attention to this because what that means is this works the way it's designed unless you have a policy that works differently. So if you have a policy that allows them to do other things, it could override this because in Microsoft fashion, they get the highest permission that you can give them. So if you've written a policy that has a select group of individuals that can do this, then they can install those apps on their own. They can do those and it will override this, okay? So it's important to know because people, oh, I clicked the button, I turned it off and people can still do it. Well, did you look at policy? So yeah, we have a policy that has a select group of users for admins to be able to do X, Y, Z, and we've, oh yeah, that's why. Which is fine, right? That's actually what I recommend, is always have a group of admins and security people and whatnot that can do those things because you want them to test it out, you want them to click the buttons. Um, but just so you know, you can override that in a policy. Once again, reference for light reading in the evening. Custom apps are now pulled out separately. So I'm starting to talk about customization. We're getting there. Um, you can actually develop and upload your own custom apps internally. If you have citizen developers, it's a great thing for them to have low code 
to be able to make Power Platform apps and upload them into Teams. If you're a security or an admin, you're like, yay. Once again, if you turn this off, users cannot upload custom apps into your environment. I highly recommend, if you are responsible for this, that you go in and you turn that button off today. <laughs> and then make sure you have a process whereby people can create their apps, review the apps, submit the apps to IT, make sure that everybody's happy, make sure they're tested before you turn this back on. <laughs> All right? So, I mean, at a high level, I think it's nice we're finally getting to a level where we can manage some of this. But, I mean, this is it for Orgwide <laughs> in Teams. Now, remember, you have Orgwide apps, or you have Orgwide settings around SharePoint, you have Orgwide settings around M365 as a whole. And so this is where, essentially, you need a logic worksheet, like a spreadsheet matrices, right? To keep track of which things are going on in which places and which things impact other things. So just remember, um, this is apps specifically for Teams, okay? This is what people see through Teams. So if you do it in a Power Platform and you put an app in Web Part in SharePoint, that's a SharePoint thing, that's a Power Platform thing. This is team specific, right? All right, questions so far? You guys doing okay? Okay. All right, so <clears throat> that's at the org-wide level. Now, if I go back into my Teams app, so that was on that Manage Apps page. When you first click on it, um, basically you get the ability to manage your apps, you get your ability to do org-wide settings. Once you go into permission policies, um, you can actually create custom policies, and these can be created for one or many groups or people, however you want to set them up. Um, and we'll, I'll walk through the demo and show you what it looks like. Um, but the permission policy section is defined to be where you are going to define permission policies around which apps are available to who. So which groups, which people, things like that. You can use the out-of-the-box default policy, which is what's enforced when you first like set this up, right? There's, you don't have to do anything, it's just there. Um, there is an org-wide default policy that's there. You can customize that for everybody and or you can create your own policies. If you've written policies, this makes sense to you. You've probably done it a million times, but you can just simply change it. Now, I will give my normal spiel about default policies. My recommendation is don't change the default policy <laughs> anywhere, right? Just don't change the default policy. If you want a different policy, make a different policy. That's my, my two cents of advice to you, uh, having done policies for, I don't know, probably close to 20 years. Don't change the default policy. You'll wish you had not done that later on, so just don't do it. Um, even though it says you can, don't. Um, but you can then make as many different policies as you want to go along with those. This is kind of a cool one. Um, I'll show you in the demo, it's kind of neat. Um, so, this, there's this setup policy. The setup policy is when Teams is loaded onto your user's devices, what it looks like, how it functions. This is probably the most frequently asked thing that I get. Hey, I want my Teams to do da 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 I want it to have this, I don't want it to have this. That's this. This policy is the one that defines what I see on the left-hand side, what order, whether or not it's pinned by default. Did you know you could pin stuff to the left nav? That's in my 101 talks, I talk about pinning stuff to the left-hand side. Well, as an admin, we can come right out of the gate with things that are pinned. So, you can go in here um, into the setup policy and you can define which apps are on the left-hand side, what order they're in, and whether or not they're pinned by default. That's really what matters here. Uh, once again, more reading, I'll show you in the demo. This is really important if um, you are using a Teams app store. So in the customized store options, I'll show you once again, there's a load of options um, <laughs> for you to choose from where you can define your organization logo, logo mark, and the background or color. That's really all it is right now because there's just not quite a lot there, but it's getting there. More importantly, before we get to demo, 
I have the stage, so I get to say a few words. To all of you guys, who's admins? Admins? This is usually an admin set. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so for you admins, um, just remember, even though they're going to tell you that Teams Apps is an admin deal, it's still development. All right. So if they are creating, they being the dev group or your citizen developers or whoever's out there making, right, whatever we call them now, makers, developers, whoever they are, um, if they are making Teams apps that are getting published into Teams, if they are downloading third party apps, remember, unless it's a Microsoft app, it's coming from somebody who made it. It is truly development behind the scenes. Please, 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 for the love of all that's holy, follow your app dev process. So if you have some sort of DevOps, if you have some sort of a methodology you follow, um, I was a SharePoint uh, practice manager for a long time and my job was basically to guard the gate. And uh, I had lots of fun conversations about what could and could not go in my app store. Oh, but you don't understand, it's vetted and people have used it for a long time and it's got a lot of marketing around it. I'm like, has it been through my testing process? No, but we've already paid for it. It's gonna take time to do that. Yes, it is. Better put that into your project plan. Okay, same thing here. Just because they're apps like apps on your phone, right? This is your users, but it's just like the app on my phone. I can just install it. Maybe not. So please remember and please stand up and find your backbones and tell your people, Sharon Weaver said it at Commsverse. It must follow the app dev process because it is a risk to my environment. Okay. Also, why do we even have an app in the first place? Make sure we're solving a problem because the next thing you know, you're going to have 8 billion apps that you're managing for no reason that all do the same thing. Okay, guess what? Microsoft has solved a lot of these problems already. It might work in a different piece of software in the M365 suite. So just make sure that um, you're not doing something that's already solving the problem in a different way, in a better way that's got a better management because Teams apps are fantastic and I'm helping Microsoft to get them out to tell people to do them. But at the same time, we don't want to introduce something into our environment just for the sake of introducing it to the environment when there's something that maybe already solves that problem. So what are we doing? Make sure that you have a test or non-prod environment. I know that we have not had to really have this in M365 for Teams yet, because why? <laughs> right? Do we really need it for chat and messaging and calling? Probably not. We do need it for, for apps. So now is the day when if you don't have a non-prod environment or a non-prod tenant, you should probably talk to somebody and say, hey guys, we get this for free. I'd like to use it, please. Okay, because when those Teams app comes in, you're going to want to test it in your non-prod environment um, just to make sure it doesn't do something wonky, make sure, it, make sure it works. I mean, if nothing else, like you don't want to put it out and have it be kind of a bad experience for your users, right? So make sure you put it in a non-prod environment. Always, always, always test it thoroughly. Like I said, these are starting to be third-party things. And it's fantastic. I love that people are putting things into the apps for, I don't know if you guys remember the early days of Windows apps and iOS apps and Android apps, but there's a lot of apps that can cause issues that don't work exactly as well as they put in the marketing. So, you know, just make sure you run them through a non-prod. Most importantly, document and publish your information, please. Um, for a lot of different reasons, and I know, you know, I'm kind of preaching to the choir a little bit here, but um, if you have apps that are coming in, um, just make sure that you're documenting everything because remember how we talked about policies kind of interacting with each other across the M365 Admin Center? Uh, the more you can document all this and keep track of everything in one place, the better it's going to be. And I'm going to give you a word of warning about what's to come in the next little bit. And that is that um, there's a lot of customization happening across the M365 landscape and a lot of opportunity for us to be able to customize it. Um, and so the sooner you write this down, the happier you're going to be. A lot of interactions coming. I mean, there's already a lot of interactions now, but there's more where everything's going to start 
kind of working together as long as it's architected and documented properly. But if not, that might get a little overwhelming. Um, and I just always a good reminder to follow good release and change management policies. For example, if you auto install, auto deploy, or auto pin a Teams app for somebody and you put it on the top of their left hand navigation, they come in the next day, two things are going to happen. One, their whole world just changed, guys. You don't understand. <laughs> it wasn't there before. And can they take it away? So, Make sure they know it's coming. Make sure they understand what it is. And you probably won't get as many service desk calls the next day. Two, there's only so much space on the left-hand side of Teams. So if you decide as an organization, these are the apps that we want everybody to have in this order and pinned at the top, guess what's gonna happen to any apps they've pinned at the bottom? They're gonna go into that little dot, dot, dot drawer. <laughs> right, we click on the dot, dot, dot. Oh, here's the rest of your stuff. It might freak people out. Where'd my stuff go? It's all gone. I can't find it, right? So um, just make sure that when, if you're going to um, change that setup policy, that you do some sort of change management to let them know. Um, also, when they start Teams the next time, they will get a very informative and descriptive little tiny box that says, your admin has made changes. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> Not like it really tells you what it is, it just says your admin has made changes. Okay, most people ignore it, but anyways. Okay, so let's pop over and demo. I'm gonna pull up the, ah, uh, this. This, you never thought the admin center could be so big, huh? Come on, you can do it, I promise. Oh, look how big that is. Okay, so we're going to see if I can do this on a second screen. Um, it's a weird refresh rate, so hey, bear with me. Okay, so admin center. Everybody comfortable with the admin center? I did a 300 level class hoping that everybody would walk here knowing at least where I'm at. Okay, so over here on the left at the bottom is our team's admin center, yes? So here's what's fun. You kind of got to dig a little bit for things in here. It's getting better. You can find things. Well, it's like everything's everywhere. I had to walk somebody through one of these, and he's like, how did you even know that was there? Like, I click on all the buttons. Doesn't everybody click on all the buttons? All right, so it's right here. There's just a little thing. It's got this nice little square icon for apps. And if you click the drop down, voila, there's the slides I just showed you. So I'm just going to kind of walk through these. All right, so, oh, oh, yeah, I forgot they did put a color around it now. Um, so this is this super intuitive, this is the button everybody's looking for. They're like, Sharon, where are the org settings? They've got to be over here somewhere. They are not. <laughs> They're right there. And if your browser is minimized or you've got something in front of it, you're not going to find it. Like, it's like, how did I even, like, why? I don't know. Provide feedback. Feel free. Um, but they're over here in the corner where all org-wide settings are on the top right. <laughs> but if you click them, it opens a completely different panel over here with all the things I talked about. So this is where all the org-wide settings are, which is separate from everything else, OK? And that's only for Teams apps. So here's where we talked about the tailored apps, the third-party apps on or off, new third-party apps on or off whether or not you allow custom apps. And then um, there is some stuff around external access. This is not quite 100% done. <laughs> but I'm telling you so that you know. <laughs> um, this is where, because you know what we need is another access area in the admin center to be able to manage <laughs> teams. Because <laughs> there's not enough already. Um, so just keep an eye over here. <laughs> so that's your little org-wide panel over here. Um, and then this gets really confusing because essentially the admin centers over here all look the same. Every single area looks the same, which is why people are like, I don't know which thing I'm doing in which area. So in this one, you are basically deciding which app 
apps, which individual apps users can be able to see and use, all right? This is where you as an admin can also upload and approve custom apps. So if you are installing Viva Connections, for example, for the very first time, and you're like, where is it that I go to manage that? Here, all right? You can go in here and you can basically decide whether or not this app is allowed, what the status is, what the licensing is, things like that. So if I go in here and I just simply click on any of these apps, um, I'll be able to then go into more details about that app specifically. And you can see down here if there's information, documentation, all the specifics for the colors and things like that. Let's say, for example, this is my demo area, so I believe that this is still called Viva. I've renamed it in my own tenant, but um, which, by the way, you can do to apps. So if I go here to my Viva Connections, if I've not installed Viva Connections yet in my tenant, um, this is where I'm going to do this. I can choose whether or not I allow or block the app individually for my users, whether or not I allow the customization, and here's the details, and here, um, keep scrolling, there you go. Here is where, it, this all used to be PowerShell. I don't know if you guys have did this early when there was PowerShell and it was awful. Because um, <laughs> you had to like rerun the PowerShell script every time, which you still have to do for certain things. Um, but for now, they've made it so that you can go in here and you can actually just re-upload the icon, which is super handy. You don't have to run PowerShell anymore. You can re-upload your little reverse negative icon or whatever. You can change your accent colors. It's getting kind of handy. So for most things, it's fairly easy to get in here now and do this. If you've got a privacy policy, you want to update it. This is all the default Microsoft junk. So if you want to change it to your privacy policy, if you want to change it to your website, stuff like that, you can go in here and change that stuff. And that's per app, okay? So that's the big thing to remember is this is every single app that you've got, all the information, all the settings, all the permissions are right there, okay? So that's what manage apps is. This next one, permissions policies. So this is where you can write a policy. Remember we talked about who can access what, all right? So the global policy out of the box is very open. <laughs> By default, it's just all on, okay? So if you want to make your own policy, it's really easy. You can just add, and you can, I don't know that there's a limit. I mean, I don't think you're going to have a ton of them, but you, know, you just go out here and add whatever policies you want. You can give it a name, give it a description, and now you can have some control over what's happening in your environment for Microsoft apps, for third-party apps, and for custom apps, as opposed to doing that org wide just shut everything off. All right, which you can do that at the beginning until you get it all sorted, which makes sense. But once you've kind of gone in here, then you can kind of decide what that flavor looks like for you. And then once you've created that policy, you can select it and you can assign groups or just individual users when you're good to go. Okay, just remember highest privilege, right? So wherever they're at, if you leave this default allow on, all your policies are a waste of space. Okay, so make sure to go back after you've set those up and go back and change your global org wide policy to whatever it is you want to be for your lowest common denominator. <clears throat> those are your end users that basically can't do anything, right? That's your lowest common denominator and then give more permissions and policies to groups and users that can have more than that. So far so good? All right, um, set up policies. Remember these are the ones of what apps can they see in Teams on the left, so when they open Teams, um, you're going to decide. Um, so which apps are made available to the user, and um, you can create custom policies. So it says use the global org wide policy um, and customize or create policies. Once again, we don't want to change our default policy till after we have specifics. Um, there used to be a first line worker policy that came out of the box. Um, this has gone away or is going away. I'm just warning you now, um, but I do make them myself 
right? I'll go in here and make one anyways. Um, so if you have an older tenant, it might still have the frontline or first line worker. If you don't, then it won't be there. It's, yeah. Um, <laughs> they decided, they're like, this is a cool idea. Oh, maybe not. Let's let people make it. Uh, so anyway, so if you go in here, um, this is the one that was default out of the box, but you can just simply make your own again. And you can then decide, are they allowed to upload apps? Can they pin their own apps or not? Or am I going to define that for them? So think about first line workers where you're like, I, these are the five apps you get. You don't get any choices versus you're an office worker and we want to let you have a little autonomy over your own teams, right? Um, so you can change that. You can install apps for them. Here's my, my words of wisdom to you admins. Install the apps. Okay, just install them for them because that way they don't have to go find them and then ask and then complain because it doesn't work, whatnot. I would say add the apps, make sure they're installed on everybody's teams as a default policy. That way you don't have to stress about it. And then if you have people who you're allowing to do other, bring other apps in, that's fine. But, um, and then here's, this is, I love this now, right? So we can choose not only what apps do we want, um, but what the order is and they're already pinned to the sidebar. So when people come in, you know, so this is really handy, especially with Viva Connections, right? So as you roll your intranet out to Teams, we want that to be as high up on the list as, hot, as possible because we want them to be able to find it in Teams. We don't want them to have to hunt for it. Um, if you have frontline workers that are using something like Shifts or you want to really push your new telephony system and so you want calling to be at the top, right? You can say these are the things that are very important to us to get our users to go after and use it as change management to make sure that those things are in the right place. All right, so it's pretty simple. You can select them and there's this fancy move up, move down. <laughs> yes. So I do, um, I've tested this pretty extensively. And so the question is, is there a delay if you do this and push this out? I have found that there is. Um, so if you're going to change this particular policy, especially, um, I would definitely one test it. Remember we talked about testing, test your changes to make sure. Um, but truthfully in every tenant, it's a little different because it has that script that runs in the back end and it depends on what's going on. I think the biggest delay I've ever seen was about 48 hours. The fastest I've ever seen is a few hours. This is not a like SharePoint, make a change and it automatically updates as far as I've seen so far. Because what has to happen is this is a global policy script that has to then go out and run to all your users. So just remember it takes time for this to happen, for it to get pushed out to them, for it to update their system. And then it depends on how you've got that set up, whether or not they're going to need to reboot or whether or not it automatically uploads, or whether you're using the browser, whether you're using the client app, right? So. I would, I would count on 24 to 48 hours from the time you make these changes to the time that your users are probably all good to go. Good question. All right, and then the last one, um, I told you there's a ton of options here. So many. <laughs> um, and basically, do you wanna show a logo? Do you wanna show a logo mark? Do you want a background image? <laughs> and what color do you want your name to be? And it has to be a specific name that will actually um, contrast against whatever the background color is. This is how far we've come, my friends. <laughs> but it's there. It's not PowerShell. I get excited when there's a button and I don't have to write more PowerShell. If we could get down into the organizational assets area, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> If I have to PowerShell, one more organizational asset photo. <laughs> All right. So notice there's little eyeballs. There's new stuff coming. So this is a space where Microsoft, I can tell you personally, because I know, is investing heavily. All this customization piece. So um, like I told you, start writing down and taking notes because there's more to come. And it's more to come soon. So keep an eye on these little eyeballs some of the new stuff. All right, you're not gonna do anything. That's fantastic. It's just, just it's like, no, no, just no. All right, I was having problems uh, earlier. I expanded one of these menus, just, oh yeah, no, see, Joy, like, 
their buggy today. Um, <laughs> I was actually doing it earlier and they wouldn't go up and down. So I'm like, oh, that's fun. Yeah, Lori's not in my session, is she? <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like I'm going to be like, hey, by the way, <laughs> um, it's a feature. <laughs> That's how new this is. Anyways, um, let me pop this back up um, just so that I can get this out of your face. Hang on, i got to figure out which screen I'm on. Come on over. There you go. Let me pop this back up so that, okay. I think we have, is there a, a mic or you guys can yell real loud? We have a few minutes left for questions, yes? Oh, oops, sorry. I mean, it's all good stuff. So, um, you guys, I see hands, so you just want to throw mics? I'll do my best, I promise. There it is now. Oh, okay. What? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. um, you spoke about testing apps in a traditional what call what traditional you know, Windows world where we onboard new apps, we know what to test for, the apps know what it could break, you know, blue screen blue screen machine, high CPU usage. But in the Teams apps world, you know, you talk about you know, telling developers we need to test apps. What are we actually testing for? What are you testing for? Yes. Um, you're testing so that you, at, at, for right now, you're testing so that you understand what's going to happen. What does it look like? Does it do what it's supposed to? Are you noticing anything glitchy when you pull it in? Um, for right now, if you're not the one developing it, it's just a third-party app, then think, have you guys done the SharePoint App Store? Think SharePoint App Store, same kind of concept where when you pull apps in from outside, you just want to make sure that you're not running into anything unexpected for right now. Um, but I would get in the practice and the habit of doing that because as the Teams apps become, the, as the customization becomes more available, um, there will be more training and more information on, on more of that. But for right now, just get in the habit of doing it. So yeah, just check for anything that could be scary basically or unexpected. So I've got another question. Um, yeah. You were showing the admin console. Uh, I'm still trying to distinguish the difference between the set of policies and the app permissions. Because it sounds like with app permissions, you, this, the policy, permission policies uh, will govern what apps users can see, or is it a way around? So is the, OK, so let me I'll make sure I understand the question. The difference between permission policies and setup policies. Yeah, is that what you're asking? Not, yeah, because obviously it sounds like both policies you control basically what users can what apps users can use so I, I can quite distinguish the difference so setup policies is what apps they're going to see and then permissions policies is what apps they have access to so in setup you're going to say i'm going to put these five on the side but if in permissions you don't allow them to see one of those apps that app will disappear, oh, it will disappear. for the pre people okay. you make it disappear for right. okay. yeah. so it's two layers yeah. okay. does that make sense yeah, it does. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Hi. Um, what's your take on the new request feature within the, the manage apps? Because at the moment it seems like a bit of a half halfway house. But you, you're not notified as an admin that someone's requested an app. You have to yeah. go in and filter the list to see all these four people have requested it. You don't know who four, who, who the four people are that have requested it. Is there a next iteration coming? On yes. That? Great. Yes. There's more coming for that. Um, it is a half-baked attempt right now. Yeah. It's the idea that essentially we want to allow, especially like our citizen developers, to have a voice in the development process. Um, but right now, that's all it is. But yes, there's there's a roadmap around that, um, but it's just not, not there yet. I got one quick question. Under the setup policy, mm -hmm. the custom apps, mm -hmm. I, well, I was under the understanding that the setup policy will um, trump, kind of like superior the org policy. So when it comes to that, that custom app slider, so we, you can set on, on the org, you can set on custom apps. So we can, like as admins, we can install the custom apps, but in the setup policy, 
you had it off on on your global, which means no one can upload. The setup. So once again, the setup policy is what apps display and in what order. That's it. Yeah. It's not about permissions. This the permission policies and the org wide policies should override the setup policy. So on. So when you're going to global there. On the top, so when you're going to set in, it, oh, in the default policy, yeah. and then that that upload custom maps is off, so right? You, so, although you've got it on at the org level, that's a user level that stops the user from uploading custom maps. This, I believe, just turns on and off the button to yeah. let them do it. Yeah, I believe. I could be wrong. <laughs> Prove me wrong. I'm pretty sure the org wide gives them the ability. And this is just the button and whether they can see the button or yes. not. Yeah. Yeah. So providing that's off, you can, because we've got one custom app that I've pushed out to all users, which I want them all to have them to have installed. But that having that button off prevents anyone from Try, from trying from trying to do Correct. it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's my understanding. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Not confusing at all. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? We are, we're, we're coming to the end of our time right now. Can I suggest that you catch up with Sean?